Good morning students. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic on renal autoregulation. So that is when your glomerular filtration rate increases. For example, how your kidney works to bring it back to normal. I will make it simple. For example, if your BP is increased, blood flow will be increased. Renal blood flow will be increased. Then what will happen to your GFR glomerular filtration rate? Yeah, it will be increased. This is. But when the GFR is increased, what happens? There is autoregulation which brings GFR back to normal. So that I am going to discuss. Even on a BP60, the GFR is 125. Even on a BP160, the GFR is 125. So this is the range. So note it down. The range of blood pressure at which the GFR remains constant is 60 to 160. It, it varies plus or minus 10. So 60 to 120. So when BP, if this autoregulation which I am going to explain does not happen, this GFR maintenance will not be there which is very very bad because glomerular filtration rate is very very important which I have discussed in my previous video in detail about glomerular filtration rate. Just yes, first we discussed what is autoregulation, then we discussed the range. So 60 to 160. Now comes the main topic that is the intrinsic mechanism by which the autoregulation is maintained. So I will explain. Mainly two things, note it down please, myogenic mechanism and second one is tubulo glomerular feedback. Now let me discuss about myogenic. So myo means we all know muscle. So I will draw the diagram of glomerulus. So what happens? Increased BP. We all know when blood pressure is increased. Yes, renal blood flow is increased. Now think here. Pressure is increased. So the afferent arterial where the blood is going to be flowed. And we all know whenever the renal blood flow is going to be more, it is increased GFR. So now this myogenic mechanism helps in bringing this GFR back normal. You have to concentrate a little bit. As the pressure increases, what happens? Or as the blood flow increases, what happens? There is a bulge. That is called a stretch, very very important. So increase in pressure, increased stretch. Please note this word stretch. So it is very simple. As the pressure increases, there is more blood flow. So imagine, yeah, this is afferent arteriole. When there is more blood flow coming in, what will happen? This will stretch because more volume. As the more volume is coming inside, there is a stretch. Now listen here, I will draw this separately here. So this was before stretch. Now as the more blood flow is coming, what happens? Yeah, this is getting stretched. This is stretched. So as the smooth muscle, this is smooth muscle, note it down. The, end of the muscle present within the blood vessel is smooth muscle. So the stretch, what happens? The smooth muscle contracts. So, now what happens? The smooth muscle contracts. Now again, so the smooth muscle first is stretched. Now what happens? This is contracting. See here. So, for example, if this is the blood vessel, there is a smooth muscle. I will make it like this. So, this is the smooth muscle. It is contracting. So, as it contracts, what happens? What will happen to this space? It will narrow. Or otherwise, it is like constriction. So, as the smooth muscle contracts, it leads to VC. That is, Vasoconstriction, especially afferent arterial vasoconstriction. So, this what happens? Yeah, this is also smooth muscle. As they contract, yeah, this space is like this reduced, reduced. Or I will draw the re diagram, see here. So, what will happen? It will be like this. You yeah, see what happens to this vasoconstriction. Note it down. So, Whenever the pressure is increased, blood flow is increased. As blood flow is increased, there is stretch. Yeah, this is normal. When the blood flow is increased, there is stretch, volume overload, the stretch. The stretch of the smooth muscle causes contraction of the smooth muscle. Stretch leading to contraction. As the smooth muscle contracts, there is vasoconstriction or the blood vessel constricts. Because of this vasoconstriction, there will be decreased blood flow. And when the blood flow is decreased, 
there will be decreased GFR. So I started with increased blood flow and increased GFR. I am ending with decreased GFR. So this is a type of autoregulation. So this is one type of intrinsic mechanism of autoregulation. Now let me explain another important topic. The second mechanism, tubular glomerular feedback. Why the name tubular glomerular feedback? Just see here DCT, distal convoluted tubule, and this is glomerulus. So what happens in this tubule? Based on that, something is going to happen in the glomerulus. Tubular glomerular feedback. Note it down. Tubular glomerular feedback. Very very important mechanism for maintaining the GFR. So now let us enter on the topic. And for this, the main thing required is JGA. Separate five mark question, which is Justa glomerular apparatus. So if you ask, I have in fact drawn the structure of Justa glomerular apparatus. So Justa glomerular apparatus includes mainly three types of cells here. Within the afferent arteriole, there are Justa glomerular cells. JG, Justa glomerular cells. Justa means side by. So side by the glomerulus, there is Justa glomerular cells. And the Justa glomerular cells are also called as granular cells. Because they will be releasing the granules into the blood. Secret renin, very very important. Justa glomerular cells secrete renin. And that is one cell, one part of Justa glomerular apparatus. And another thing noted down, in the distal convoluted table, there is a very very important structure called macula densa. See here, macula densa, which is also part of, I will just write the JGA here. Or, yeah, this entire thing is JGA, macula densa, justa glomerular cells, laxis cells. So, the justa glomerular cells includes macula densa, which is coming from distal convoluted tubule, JG cells, which is from the afferent arteriole, and the laxis cells. Just now explain the structure of justa glomerular apparatus. Now, coming to tubular glomerular feedback. So, I will just explain. Now imagine same thing, increased BP, we all know, next step, there will be increased renal blood flow, that is increased GFR, now just concentrate, increased GFR, now what happens, yeah, that is increased, 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 so just as an, whenever there is increase in GFR, yeah, whenever this downward arrow is going to be more, this is also going to be more. This is continuation. Loop of friendly, ascending limb of loop of friendly, DCT. So, whatever occurs in PCT, the same thing is going to be there in DCT. Or otherwise, when there is increase in GFR, there is increased sodium chloride delivery to DCT. Very, very important. So, I again repeat, when there is increased glomerular filtration rate, maybe because of increased blood flow or blood pressure, there is increased glomerular filtration rate. When there is increased glomerular filtration rate, the sodium chloride coming here into the DCT, distal chloride table is more. One more reason also can be told. When there is increased glomerular filtration rate, just listen here, instead of 125 ml, it is very more. Then what will happen to reabsorption? Yeah, reabsorption will be very, very less because it is fast. So, when the glomerular filtration rate is very more and very rapid, the reabsorption will be less. So, that also contributes to more sodium chloride coming here. So, when the GFR is more, there is more sodium chloride, increased sodium chloride. That is what I have marked here. Increased sodium chloride delivery to distal chloride. This is very, very important in this tubular glomerular feedback. This increased sodium chloride delivery is sensed by macula densa. So, macula densa is a very important so, macular densa is very important here. Yeah, the function of macular densa is sensing, sensor. Sensing. So, macular densa senses how much sodium chloride is coming. Now, the macular densa, what it does, for example, now here there is increased sodium chloride delivery. We all know because of increased glomerular filtration rate. Now, what this macular densa does is it secretes or it sends signals to Afferent arteriole. That's why I have drawn afferent arteriole. See here. Here there is afferent arteriole and there is a communication. Now what happens? There is increased sodium chloride. 
Now, because of this, what happens? There is increased adenosine. Note it down. There is increased adenosine, and what this adenosine does? Increases calcium, and what this calcium does? Increases smooth muscle contraction. And what this smooth muscle contraction does? Vasoconstriction. So I will write it same thing here. So what this macular tensor does whenever there is increased sodium chloride, it increases adenosine. And this adenosine increases calcium. And this calcium increases smooth muscle contraction. And this smooth muscle contraction causes vasoconstriction of afferent arteriole. That's what I mentioned there. There is a communication sending the macular tensor sends the macular tensor sends signals to afferent arteriole. What signals? Constriction of afferent arteriole. Now listen here. The afferent, like myogenic. What happens? There is a rasa constriction of afferent arteriole. So what will happen when there is rasa constriction of afferent arteriole? Yeah, blood flow is going to decrease. Decreased renal blood flow. GFR is decreased. So I started here with increased GFR and because of autoregulation, I am ending with increased GFR. This is tubule and this is glomerulus. So tubulo glomerular feedback. That's why the name tubulo glomerular feedback. So whenever there is increased GFR, more sodium chloride is present in distal coronal tubule. As there is more sodium chloride that is sensed by macula densa. Yeah, this is macular densa, very important. MD. So, MD, remember MD, macular densa. It is like a managing director of this just glomerular apparatus. And one more we can tell. Yeah, this is okay. Now, listen here. There is increased sodium chloride delivery to distal chloride tubule. Now, tell me what will happen to renin, which is secreted by JG cells. You can pause the video and tell. Whenever there is increased sodium chloride delivery, what happens? Decrease the renin. So, what happens? Angiotensin 2 is decreased. So, when angiotensin 2 is decreased, it means what is the function of angiotensin 2? Efferent arteriole vasoconstriction, which is decreased. When efferent arteriole vasoconstriction is decreased, what will happen to GFR? Decreased. Mechanism is adenosine. Note it down. This is first mechanism adenosine. Another is renin. So, more glomerular filtration. Absorption is very less. So, more sodium chloride delivery to distal coronary tubule. Now, this more sodium chloride delivery decreases the renin, which is coming from just glomerular cells. So, one more signal. Now, renin is decreased. So, what will happen to angiotensin 2? Renin angiotensin. So, angiotensin 2 is also decreased. And the main function of angiotensin 2 is, the main function of angiotensin 2 is, efferent arterial vasoconstriction. This has to constrict, but that will not constrict because renin is decreased. So, now what will happen? There will be Vasodilation. Vasodilation. So, output is more. So, more blood is going to be out of the afferent arterial. Then what will happen to this? This will be decreased. So, GFR is decreased. That is what I mentioned. This is with when the BP is increased or when GFR is increased. To make it complicated, I will explain one more mechanism. When the GFR is decreased, what it will happen? So, decreased blood pressure, decreased blood flow. Yeah, decreased GFR. Uh, now it is very easy because now, now think of this GFR, glomerular filtration rate is very less. So, absorption will be more or less. Pause the video until when GFR is less, it is coming very slowly. So, that will be absorbed or that will be more absorbed or less absorbed. The answer is it will be more absorbed. And already the GFR coming is low, very low and it is also being absorbed. So, what will happen to here? Now, we have to change it. So, decreased sodium chloride delivery. Yeah, so sodium chloride delivery is decreased in distal convoluted tubule. Note it down. Again, that will be sensed by MD, managing director, which is macular densa, which is the controlling and it is sensor. So, macular densa will now know sodium chloride delivery is very, very less. No, no, no. We have to bring it back to normal. And here what happens? This again secretes. PGE2 and nitric oxide, note it down. There, when the BP is more, it is adenosine. 
here it is prostaglandin E2 and nitric oxide. So, prostaglandin E2 and nitric oxide, I will continue it here. So, prostaglandin E2 nitric oxide, which is vasodilator. Now, tell me vasodilator. So, afferent arterial vasodilation occurs. So, what will happen when this afferent arterial vasodilation? So, this is going to be more, space is more. So, blood flow is going to be more. GFR is going to be more. Very simple. So, we started with decreased GFR. We are ending with increased GFR. This is when the GFR is less, what happens within this just glomerular apparatus mechanism to bring it back to normal. And again, when there is decreased sodium chloride delivery, another thing, second mechanism in this just glomerular in this second part, in this tubular glomerular feedback. So, when there is decreased sodium chloride, what will happen to renin? Yes, renin is going to be more, which is coming from JG cells. Now, when renin is more, Ra is going to be more, that is, angiotensin 2 is going to be more. When angiotensin is more, vasoconstriction of efferent arterial is going to be more. So, now what will happen? There, vasodilation. Now, change it to vasoconstriction. Yes. So, this is efferent arterial is constricting. So, as the efferent arterial is vasoconstricting, what will happen to GFR? GFR will be more. So, we started with decreased GFR. We are ending with increased GFR. This is tubular glomerular feedback. So, we started with the BP range 60 to 160, where even though the pressure is increased or decreased or blood flow is increased or decreased, your GFR remains constant. That is auto regulation. And two mechanisms we discussed, myogenic and tubular glomerular feedback. Myo means muscle, simple. Myogenic, when your BP is more, blood flow is more, the smooth muscle gets stretched. As the smooth muscle stretches, it contracts, smooth muscle contracts. When the contraction is there, the vessel wall is narrow or vasoconstriction takes place, especially afferent arterial. So, the input blood flow is reduced. So, what will happen to GFR? Reduced. That is myogenic. Tubular glomerular feedback is second mechanism where the main sensor is macular densa, which is a part of the glomerular apparatus. By the way, GFR is trying to come back to normal. So, today we discussed intrinsic mechanism of renal autoregulation. Next today we will be discussing about another important topic in excretion, maturation reflux. So, if you like this video, please share to your friends and if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel so that I will be able to put more and more videos and you will be getting benefited. Thank you. We will meet it in the next video.